Hello and welcome. Today we're working on recording journal entries. This is like accounting chapter two, or you can think of it as recording business transactions. You know, financial accounting chapter two typically. So let's get started. I've got a full playlist of accounting videos and accounting articles. You'll see in the links below. So we have lots of ways for you to learn accounting, learn this financial accounting. All right, so let's think about where we are in chapter two. You don't know how to do journal entries yet. You're tr trying to learn the system. So remember, accounting is the language of business. So we have a lot of terms and concepts you kind of have to know to, to get started working problems. So this video won't really have any problems to it. Uh, the next several videos will start working pr plenty of problems to make sure you know what's going on. Now, to prepare financial statements, we have to have business transactions. So if you borrow money, from the bank, that's a business transaction. If you pay your employees, that's a business transaction. So you understand how that works. So we have business transactions and then we record in the journal. So here we have the journal and a journal just lists all the transactions for the day and for the week and for the month and for the year, so on. Now, to figure out the balance of each account, we use a ledger. So the ledger just lists all the accounts and it figures out the balance, all the pluses and minuses, and it figures out the balance of each account. And then we use a trial balance. A trial balance is the idea where we have um, the list all the accounts with all the debits and with all the credits, and we end up with, to make sure that the debits equal the credits, and we can move on to the financial statements. Here are our financial statements. We have the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of owner's equity, and the cash flow statement. Let's talk about those next. All right, our financial statements that we end up with, the, this is the end of the process. Journal entries are really the beginning of the process so that you need to make sure you understand this. So really we're gonna spend time, these are the two that we'll probably spend the most time with and we'll do the other two also, but you need to know the income statement. Income statement is revenues minus expenses, and that gives you net income or net loss. Net income, another word for that is profit. So the income statement lists all the revenues, it lists all the expenses, and we end up with a, either a profit or a loss. Now the next one is the balance sheet. The balance sheet just lists all the assets and the liabilities and the equity. Now this is called the accounting equation. Assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So the balance sheet has to balance to show that the assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, the owner's equity, we'll get to that later in the cash flow statement. The owner's equity just says, look, paid in capital is what the owners have put in. The retained earnings is what we've earned from the business. And that represents the owner's share of the business. And then we care about cash because you have to have cash. And so then you have cash inflows, cash outflows, and you have a net cash flow. So that's the cash flow statement. All right, the next is we need to talk about the five types of accounts. So we have assets, liabilities, and equity. These three are called the balance sheet accounts. Now, everything's really defined starting with what about assets? What are assets? Assets are any resources that are owned by the business. It's anything we own that has value. And a couple of examples of the assets would be cash, receivables, the right to collect cash, inventory, land, buildings, anything that is value that we own is an asset. All right, so liabilities are just simply debts. That's it, debts. You can call these claims by the creditors. Creditors are the, you know, the bank you owe money to. And so instead of own, liabilities are what you owe. And a lot of these accounts would say payables. Accounts payable, notes payable, uh, income tax payable, wages payable, all those would be liabilities. So it should be easy to figure out liabilities. Then equity is claims by the owners or what is left over for the owners. And so you can define this as assets minus liabilities. Remember the accounting equation, it's assets equals liabilities plus equity. Well, whatever's left over for the equity is just simply assets minus 
anytime you pay off all your debts. Let me give you a simple example. If you have a car and you owe $15,000 on it and you sell that car for $20,000, then what happens is you have a $20,000 asset, the car, now you've converted it to cash, you pay off the $15,000, how much cash do you have left? How much equity do you have left? Well, your equity would be $5,000. So what you own of that car. So if you have a $20,000 car, then the bank has claimed a 15,000 of it and you have claimed a 5,000 of that car. So that's what equity is. Always understand what is the owner's interest in that? What's the owner's claim? So there's a couple of different ways uh, we can look at uh, equity. It could be what the owners have paid in. Paid in capital includes capital stock or the capital account, and then retained earnings is what the business has earned that benefits the uh, owner, and so that's called retained earnings. Now we have two other accounts. These are go on the income statement, so we call them income statement accounts. So we have revenues and we have expenses. You understand this, you know, intuitively you understand how this works, but let's be uh, pretty specific on this. You might say, well, anytime you receive cash from the business, well, it has to be from customers, right? So you, anytime you receive assets from the customers by selling a product or service, it could be more than cash. It could be a receivable that you receive. It could be inventory that you receive. And so therefore, um, it's you have to receive assets by selling a product or service. So the accounts are called service revenue or sales or interest revenue, so on and so on. Now, we use the double entry accounting system. That means every transaction has two sides, has two different accounts. It's like if you look at a coin, there's always the front side and the back side, right? So it might be the, the heads or the tails. Well, that's how you do a transaction in accounting. There's always two sides. There's a heads and there's a tails of that transaction. Now expenses, we're gonna use up assets. It's the cost of operating our business. So it's things like wages expense and cost of sales. Now, the other side of this transaction, a lot of times would be cash, but it doesn't have to be cash. It could be any time we use up an asset. So you gotta think about what two accounts are affected, not just what one account is affected. Now, this is the area where you need to understand. We're gonna just kinda of give you the system and the next video will explain the system and show you how to work problems. But we can't work problems unless you understand the rules. Here are the rules. Okay, for example, in the United States, we drive on the right side of the road. Somebody decided, hey, we need to have a rule. Let's all drive on the right side of the road. And everybody, if you're following the law, you drive on the right side of the road. Well, that's, there's nothing magical about that. Like, of course, that's a uh, discovery that we discovered. And that's the, uh, the scientific method or that's capital T truth. It's just the system we use. So, you know, I don't think about it when I start driving every day, but, but if I started driving the wrong side of the road, it would be uh, a disaster for me and everyone else. So here's what happens. Every account has a left side and a right side. And instead of saying left and right, we use the words debit and credit. So you see on these accounts, every account can be represented by this little left and right, and we call this a T account. So these are five different T accounts. You see, we have kind of a capital T here, across and then down. And so every side has a debit or credit. And every left side is debit, and every right side is credit. Now, on assets, we say, well, to increase an asset, we're gonna debit that. And we can use that as a verb. To debit something is to put it on the left side. To credit is put it on the right side. Okay, now, you'll notice that each account has its own set of rules. Liabilities take a credit to increase. Equity takes a credit to increase. Revenues take a credit to increase and expenses take a debit to increase. So now we have, we've added a layer. We not only need to know the two types of accounts, what two accounts are affected, we also need to know does does that account, is that an asset, a liability, an equity, a revenue, or expense? And then that account takes a 
debit or credit to increase or a debit and credit to decrease. So these are the rules, you have to understand it. Let me give you a quick way to understand this and then the next video will start working problems. I use the, the rule called dealer, okay? Dealer is our five accounts and I've added one. Dividends account, dividend is a special type of owner's equity. So if we look at the uh, equity account, uh, the dividend account would be an opposite account to equity. And so now we have three and three on each side. So let's add the dividends account. We'll see that uh, pretty early. So we're going to group together dealer, D-E-A-L-E-R. And the D-E-A is dividends, expenses, and assets. Okay. The rules for those three are debits increase and credits decrease. Now on the other side of the coin, we have liabilities, equity, and revenues where debits decrease and credits increase. Now, you're going to have to memorize this system. You can't do journal entries without understanding this system because here's what we do. We basically, let me show you real quickly, we basically use journal entries and we put debits first and then credits and we uh, debit an account, we credit an account, and for the same amount. So one of the things we have, you need to understand, here's another way to look at uh, the dealer rules, is the DEA, it takes debits to increase, and so the normal balance is a debit balance. LER are balances that increase with credits, so the normal balance is a credit balance. There's two sides of every transaction. There's a debit side, there's a credit side. The debits and credits have to equal. Every transaction affects two different accounts. And so dealer, this is the way uh, that we're gonna understand how to make journal entries. So in the next video, we'll review these rules again and start showing how this works with journal entries. The only way you can get good at this is to make sure you memorize this and then work plenty of problems so you really, really understand how this works. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Good luck in accounting.